Hi there. My name is Rob Verkirk and I'm a multidisciplinary um, scientist who's been working for the last 40 years between the fields of environmental, agricultural and health sustainability. I'm introducing you here to the work that we've been doing on how we might go about building health systems that are sustainable. When you look at the ways in which the biosphere can potentially coexist with human civilization, we have to address the way that we live and how we live. And of course, in this department, we don't do very well. About 70% of the burden we place on health systems are caused by preventable diseases linked to our lifestyles. Our lifestyles, of course, also contribute very significantly to the habitat destruction, loss of biodiversity, and of course, climate change. The bulk of our health challenges result because of our poor adaptation between our genes and the modern environments in which we live. It's a disconnect between our genetic blueprint that's changed remarkably little during the last 20,000 or so years, being fundamentally pretty similar to that of our Paleolithic ancestors. Most healthcare today relies on addressing health challenges after they've happened. This is just unsustainable because by the time lifestyle mediated disease has manifested, it's a hugely challenging and expensive process to bring people back to a state of good health and resilience. As Benjamin Franklin famously said when he was talking to the people of Philadelphia, threatened by fire back in 1736, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And of course, this couldn't be more relevant today. The trouble is, we don't have any real joined up thinking on how to achieve the most important form of prevention. That's primary prevention, how you stop healthy people from getting sick in the first place. More importantly, how you can create or regenerate health. At the heart of this and central to our blueprint for health system sustainability are three things. The first is that we've got to actually focus on health more than on disease. And then we have to look at the drivers and mediators of health rather than the markers of disease. Second thing is we need to develop a common language that individuals can use to communicate about their health. Given we're highly complex biological systems interacting in an ecological world in which the functionality of these interactions layered over our epigenetic landscape dictates the status of our health at any point in time, it makes sense for this language to include elements both of systems biology and ecology. The third thing we need to do is develop from the ground up an interactive community-based health system that individuals can plug into to gain the support and the guidance they need. This is very different from the paternalistic model of healthcare in which doctor knows best and dictates which interventions are needed. These guides will include practitioners from a whole host of backgrounds and are just as likely to include fitness professionals and health coaches as primary care physicians like GPs and secondary care specialists and consultants. We've been developing our blueprint over the last 10 years or so using a collaborative approach, gaining inputs from a very wide range of experts from different backgrounds and fields.
we're acutely aware that this is a system that needs to work in the most deprived communities as well as in all other communities because it's in these underprivileged communities that the burdens are by far the greatest. This means that the behaviour change aspect from nudges to incentives all the way through to education in schools and within the healthcare professions themselves is going to be critical to making the transition towards health systems that are more sustainable. But while we're amidst an increasing understanding of the need for radical change to protect against climate change and loss of biodiversity, now we feel is the time for human beings to really look to nature-based solutions for health. That means really understanding where our food comes from and how it affects and interacts with our bodies and how we rest, work and play in ways that help us live in greater harmony, not only with ourselves, but the world around us. The emerging field of lifestyle medicine needs to fast track itself into a position as the dominant form of medicine practiced by individuals, who in turn need to be able to be guided by a diverse range of health professions that can meet the needs of individuals and specific communities. This requires a much higher level of self-responsibility and engagement in self-care by the individual as well as re-education around what health is and what resilience is and how it can be created. So we need systemic change at every level. But with crisis comes opportunity. We've got two crises on going on at the moment, one that affects the planet and another that threatens the viability of the planet's most dominant species. So we have to learn to adapt better to the world around us. And as we found with so many previous solutions that make human endeavors more sustainable, we have to look to nature more than to new technologies to deliver these solutions. So I greatly look forward to sharing more about our blueprint for health system sustainability in the future. Thank you for listening.